If you got your Bible, open up to Psalms uh, chapter 95, and then also go ahead and open up to Matthew. I've actually got a couple passages we're going to look at this morning. Matthew, uh, if you want to turn there to Matthew chapter 7, we'll be there in James chapter 1, kind of thump, thump, put a, a, a piece of paper or something there. We'll be by those passages in just a moment. I want to pick up in a series that we started last week called If Only. If Only. And last week we talked about, as we looked here in Psalms, where the Lord says, If only my people, if only they would hear my voice, hear my instruction, and the outcome in Psalms 95, he says, they would attain my rest. But because they didn't listen to my instruction, because they didn't hear what I have to say, they don't receive my rest. They don't have rest. And last week we talked about this is regrets versus peace. And that life, this life that we live, leads to regrets. This life without Christ. Listen, the Bible tells us this is the end of our life as a non-believer is destruction. It's death. Oh, but friend, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that more abundant. But here's the key thing. We must listen to his instruction. we got to be ones to receive his instruction. And so this morning, I want to talk to you, uh, and not d- just about what we gain, peace, everlasting life, but how we gain that. How we gain that. Look here in Psalms chapter 95, as we start, it, it says this in verse 7, uh, the second half of verse 7. He says, if only you would listen to his voice Today, somebody say today. The Lord says, don't harden your hearts as Israel did in Meribah, as they did in Massa in the wilderness, for there your ancestors tested and tried my patience, even though they saw everything I did. For 40 years I was angry with them, and, and I said, they are, uh, they are a people whose hearts turn away from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. So in my anger I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest. We understand that this speaks of the promised land, but this place of receiving the glory and the benefit of serving the Lord in a place of peace. And we talked about that last week. So if you want to pick up more information about that, go online. You can watch the sermon last week. This week, I want to focus on this one line, what we saw right here at the end of verse 7. He says, if only you would listen Somebody look to your neighbor and say, listen, Linda, listen. Some of y'all, you'll go home and watch YouTube video and you'll catch that here later on. Listen. He says, if you'll only listen, then we will gain his peace. If you'll flip back, and this isn't going to be on the screens, but I want to just reference another place in Psalms 81 where the Lord's saying the same thing through his people, through the psalmist. And, and it's the same issue because we realize that with the children of Israel, they, they, the Lord would speak, but they would not listen. They would not heed his word. In fact, Jesus, in the New Testament, when we would see the writings in red, he would often say this term. He who has ears, let him what? Hear. And here's the problem. Oftentimes, we fall short because we think that hearing is just an audible sound that is spoken to us, and we go, okay, I got it. But no, see, Jesus demands the next step of that, of not just that we would hear it, but that we would apply it. Jesus said, how do you know that you love me? Not if you would just hear my commands, but if you would obey, keep my commands. So there's a followed out process. So how do we know if we've heard him? If we're obeying him. How do we know we've listened? If we've applied the truth. Listen to what happens here in Psalms 81. Uh, the psalmist Asaph is, is speaking. He, he says this in verse 8. Listen to me, O my people, while I give you stern warnings. How many of y'all like warnings? I like warning signs. You know why? Because they help give me life. They help preserve life. Warning signs help lead me to blessing. Come on, somebody. Or they keep me in the blessing. But when I don't heed, when I don't listen, guess what happens? Destruction, anguish, hurt. 
All you parents of the room say, hit your kid on the leg, say, he's talking to you. Listen, listen, look, look what he says here. You must never have a for He goes, oh, Israel, if you would only listen to me, you must never have a foreign God. You must not bow down before a false God. For it is I, the Lord your God, who rescued you out from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it with good things. He says, let me remind you who saved you. Let me remind you who delivered you. It was I, the one true God. Friend, if you don't get anything else out of this message today, you need to get this. Stop paying attention to the news and the media. Stop giving your ear to all these false gods who try to lead your life. Look unto the author and the finisher of faith, the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, I want to tell you something. He'll never lead you astray. There's a reason why his way is narrow. Come on. Because there's only one way. There's only one direction. And if we'll follow him, friend, oh, you will experience life and that more abundant. He says, but no, my people wouldn't listen. Israel did not want me around. How foolish. You know, it's interesting because we see stories of this in the New Testament where Jesus would show up, he would cast a demon out, and all the people would show up and be like, oh! And most of us would think revival would take place. But no. Scripture was so just the opposite that they would say, Jesus, you leave. Why is that? Why is that? When Jesus would do something so supernatural and transform somebody's life, but then the people, both religious and non alike, would reject the power of Jesus Christ and contain, remain in their sin. You know why people would do that? Because they reject change. And the sad part, Scripture says, is that their eyes are blinded. They're blinded in their sin. They're blind in their carnality. Oh, but aren't you thankful for the Holy Spirit who moves the veil to show us our desperate need of Jesus Christ? Amen. Come on, I'm preaching better than you shouting this morning. Look what happens, he says. But no, my people wouldn't listen. The Israel did not want me around, so I let them follow their own stubborn desires. Come on, somebody. Living according to their own ideas. You want to continue remaining in your place of doubt? You want to continue remaining in your place of lies? You want to continue to remain on the path of death? All right. The Lord will let you. He says, oh, that my people just listen to me. How many parents in the room can, 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 can I get an amen from this morning? Oh, that my people would just listen to me. Oh, that Israel would follow me and walk in my path. How quickly, listen to this. You want to you wanna know where the key of life and blessings is at? I'm giving it to you this morning. Oh, that they would just listen to me. Look what he says he would do. How quickly. Quickly. Somebody look to your neighbor and say, quickly. Look to another neighbor and say, that means really fast. How quickly I would then subdue their enemies. How soon my hands would be upon their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him. They would be doomed forever. Oh, but I would feed you with the finest sweet. I would satisfy you with wild honey from the rock. Let me tell you this morning, I've come to tell you, and I've come to call out to your church, oh, would you just listen? Oh, would you turn your ears to the Lord and not just listen, but respond to the truth that Jesus came to give? Friend, I want to tell you something. Jesus came with the truth that presented life. He came to share good news because that which the people had, that which they attained, that which they were following, that which they were giving ear to was a lie of destruction, was a life that would be a moral misery and failure, a life that would remain in captivity. Oh, but Jesus said, whom the Son sets free is what? 
Free indeed. But here's the responsibility. You have a free will. You have a free will to either say yes to King Jesus and to listen and to respond by faith or to reject and remain in your sin and to remain in your lost state and to remain on a path of destruction. Oh, but God's a desire. He paved the way. He has taken care of it all that you might have life that you might have life. But if we would just listen. It's interesting because not only did the psalmist write about this, but Jesus shared this exact same truth. If we would just have ears to listen. And as you're turning there in Matthew chapter 7, let me just tell you this today. We serve a God who still speaks. And let me just tell you, His message has not changed. It hasn't changed. For some 2,000 plus years, he remains the same message, saying the same thing, going forth. And now his spirit is calling to the deep. His voice is speaking this hour, saying, come and follow me. Come, follow me. Turn from your ways and come, follow me. Turn from your sin. Come and follow me. Oh, if we would just listen. If we would just give an ear to hear the voice of the Spirit speak. Look what happens. Jesus speaks in Matthew chapter 7. It's interesting because Jesus cast out, uh, actually here in Matthew, Jesus is, is speaking and talking about building a firm foundation within your life. Look what he says here in Matthew chapter 7 verse 24. Therefore whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them. So this is the one who hears him and then responds by faith and begins to do them and apply them to the truths in their life, he says, I will liken him to a wise man. How many of you want to be a wise man? Not a wise guy, a wise man. Come on, somebody. I want to be wise. Man, I want to, do you know what happens if you have wisdom? If you have wisdom, then you have, you'll gain the understanding to know what to do with the wisdom you've attained. Come on, you need wisdom. You want to be wise. And listen to what he says. I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain descended. The floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. How many of you had that happen in your life at one point or another? You know what? Every one of us in this room can raise our hands because we just went through a pandemic. I can't even say it. It was so bad. Every one of us can testify of this. But here's the question. How did we stand in the midst of that? He says, but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house. I want you to take note here. The same, the same destruction, the same trials, the same tribulations came upon both men. Come on. Came up on both. But there was, a dis, di, uh, there was a vast difference between the two. He says, listen, the one who did not apply these sayings of mine, he heard them, but he didn't do them. If uh, his house fell, and great was its fall. I want to tell you something, friend. If you're trying to build your life upon your own principles and upon principles that you've heard from somebody, and based, not based upon the Word of God, Friend, when, just, when, when trials and tribulations come, quickly you're going to find out what your foundation is built upon. That's what he's saying here. But here's the interesting thing is that whenever your life is built upon the chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ, doesn't matter what will happen. You may fall. You may stumble in moments, but you'll only fall to your foundation. Come on, somebody. I want to tell you, though, King Jesus will sustain you through it all. And that's what he's saying here is that in your life, those who hear his voice, those who hear his instruction, and they apply them, they heed, they act on, they by faith live by. When trials come, when tribulation happens, they'll stand firm. But those who don't, friend, they will have a great fall. You know, it's interesting. We saw 
in these last couple of years, we've been seeing ministers even who have gone by the wayside, who even preached the Word of God, but apparently they didn't apply it within their life. A place where all of a sudden they begin to make room for sin in their life. They begin to make room for things in life that God blatantly says to reject and refuse. And yet they begin to open a door, and this is what happens. Tragically, Scripture tells us, we're going to read a passage here in just a little bit, that whenever Jesus casts out a demon, that when that demon comes back and he finds out there's home, all of a sudden he goes out and gets seven more to come back and take up home there. He comes aggressively. But here's the thing, those who stand firm upon the firm foundation of King Jesus, they'll stand strong. In fact, Scripture tells us that He'll be our vindicator. He'll fight our battles. Come on. But it demands that we hear His Word and that by faith we respond and we act on His Word accordingly. And James, he, he, James writes it just a little bit different. He says this, James chapter 1, verse 19. He gives just a little bit different perspective. And while you turn there, I want you to remember these two thoughts. Remember, hears the sayings of mine and does them. Or hears them and doesn't do them. I want you to remember that contrast. We'll come back to that in just a moment. James chapter 1, verse 19. He says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. That means this is very important. In your Bible, you should highlight that, circle it, underline it in red. This is important. Students, you should take note of this. Everyone, not just some of us, but every one of us, be quick to hear. Be quick to hear the Word of God. And listen to what he says, and slow to speak, slow to become angry. I'm going to just give you my, my Keynes East Texas paraphrase of this. And I I, I want you to hear me out. I believe, and this is what I take from this truth. Not only should we hear the Word of God, it's interesting because he says to be slow to speak. I don't know about you, but there's times that I feel like I have the answer, and I like to try to give it. But I just need to wait on it for a moment. Because sometimes if I try to give the answer, I find out I fall into the setup. Come on, somebody. But here he says, be quick to hear. Hear the voice of God. Don't be so quick to give a rebuttal. Because tendency is, if our rebuttal is generally a justification for where we once were. Or where we are, which is generally wrong. Here he says, be quick to hear, slow to speak. And look what his next statement is. Slow to become what? Why would we get angry when God speaks? If not to justify our rightness. Come on, somebody. He says this, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Now listen, when God speaks, He's speaking to speak life into you. He's speaking to give instruction, to give direction in your life. So just listen. And instead of trying to justify your position, well, God, I'm just trying to fix them. Well, no, let me work on you. (laughs) God, if they would just listen, well, let's start with you. Come on, somebody. He says, therefore, get rid of all moral filth, the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Come on. Man, the Word of God, listen, it comes. It's life. Come on, it severs light and darkness. It separates, and it demands a response that we would say yes by faith and act in obedience according to. And when we do, we experience the life in which it comes from. Jesus. My, my, my. Are y'all with me this morning? If I recall somewhere, I read, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by or through me. And here's the deal, friend. It demands that we hear and that we respond by faith and obedience to be able to receive the fullness of grace and salvation that is found only through Jesus Christ. Look what happens. He says this, 
James speaking. Get rid of this sin, he says, which can only save. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Well, I heard that. I, I read that one time in a magazine. I, well, that's great that you read it. That's great that you, but did you hear it? Did it change you? Because see, friend, when God shows up in your life, he demands change. His presence changes everything. Every time I encounter the presence of God, something shifts in my life. You know why? Because I'm a work in progress. I am working my salvation out daily. So when His presence shows up, you know what it does? It demands me to surrender those things which I have yet to surrender. Come on. And out of my life, where I have surrendered, I glorify the Father and give praise. There's a place of response in my life every time I'm in His presence. Every time. That which is yet to yield, it must yield. Otherwise, He's not Lord. Surrender it all. He says this, do not mean, but and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what I, I say, uh, what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But when you, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law gives freedom and continues in it for, for uh, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it they will be blessed in what they do. This way he continues to say, those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongue deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and keep oneself from being polluted by the world. I want you to see this. Here the Lord, through the Holy Spirit through, through James gives a very simple illustration of following God and your religion, true religion, true following after Him and believing in God demands an act of your life. And He gives a simple response. He says, let me show you what true religion looks like. It's being taken care of, the widows and the orphans. It's a place of simple response. And we say, well, wait a second. We're not saved by our works. You're right. It's an act of grace of God alone. We're saved by His grace. But listen, you're still going to be judged for what you did with what you knew. You're going to be judged when you stand before the judgment throne of God. You're going to be judged for what you did with what you knew about Jesus. What you heard, did you act on it? Come on, somebody. And there's a place of response in our life because here's what he's saying. Don't wait for tomorrow, but today, listen by faith, respond, and walk in the abundant life of Jesus. Walk in His blessing. Walk in the hope. Walk in the fullness of His goodness. So two truths, if you're taking notes this morning, I've given to them, I'll read to you. Write these down. Number one, listen. If only we would listen. If only we would listen. If only, in Jeremiah he said this, call to me and I will answer you to tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. In Proverbs 16, 20, he says, whoever gives heed to instruction prospers and blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. What does that mean? That means we hear him word, we take him at his word, and we listen to it. But not only that, we respond to the truth of his word. And listen what he says, knowing that there's blessing that comes out of that, that there's life that comes out of following Jesus. Listen to the cost of not listening. In Proverbs 10, verse 17, he says, Whoever heeds discipline shows the way to life. Those who heed discipline, those who hear God's discipline, they find life. The direction of it. Oh, friend, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. Not only do you bring damnation, destruction to yourself, but to all those who are, you're connected with, all those who you influence, you lead others astray. Friend, I don't know about you, but dear God, I pray not only grace and mercy upon my life, oh, but that I might not lead others astray. Friend, I would not want the burden to know that others went to hell because I didn't hear the voice of God. Because I didn't yield to the word of God. Come on, somebody. 
Now listen, whenever in your life, there's a, there's a principle that, that I, I talk about in counseling. That whenever we make decisions in life, it's like throwing pebbles in, a, in, a, in water. The only thing is, is we don't realize this, is it may cause a ripple effect close, but it causes tidal waves and tsunamis down the line. Whenever you make a decision and whenever you choose to sin in your life, you cause destruction not only to your life, but to even those around you. I want to tell you something. You, you impact, you affect people around you more than what you think. To think that there's people who are going to hell because of us. Dear God, please don't let it be. But see, here's the blessing and the good truth. Is there's people who are going to heaven because of you. Because you prayed. Because you made a decision to follow Jesus. Because you made a decision. Instead of being a distraction, you're going to be a signal pointing one way to Jesus through your life. Come on, somebody. Man, that's your life. That in your life, you say, listen, I don't want nobody being drugged to hell by me. No, I'm going to get my life right. And everybody I run into, I'm going to make sure they have a relationship with Jesus like I do. Can I just tell you something? There's something in my heart burning right now in this hour more than it has ever. And I don't know if, if it's a sign of the times. If, I don't know if it's something that I'm sensing the Spirit doing. I just know that there's a deep, deep call within my spirit saying, preach the gospel. There's something deep within my heart saying, now, give them Jesus. Give them Jesus Call them. And there's a heartbeat in my heart for search and rescue. Search at those who are lost and drawn to Jesus. So much so that I have to fight it at times where I'm saying, I'm going, right now, God? And there's this place of screaming inside my spirit saying, yes! I, I, I tell you, so much so. Tuesday night at District Council, there was something, man, we had a phenomenal, phenomenal ordination service and healing service. We were there till 10.30 at night. Testimony after testimony of healings. They were bringing the kids out of kids' council into the service and kids being laid hands on and, and testimonies coming out of that. I get up and I walk out. As I'm walking out, there's this dad and this young boy and the Holy Spirit said for me to bless him. And I was like, ah, and I turned and we were kind of in a hurry trying to get on out and I, I'm taking off and I'm trying to catch up with my wife and with Pastor Nancy. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit said, I said, bless him. And man, just something on the inside was like, I better. So I turned around, went up there, and I asked the dad, said, hey, can I, can I give this to your son? And I, and I did what I felt like I was supposed to do. And I turned around and I walked off. And y'all, this story might sound familiar because this has been happening to me quite often lately. But I go off. And as I'm walking, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit said, you didn't do what I told you to do. Bless him. And literally, I mean, just the Spirit of God so strong, literally halted me. Casey said later, she goes, where did you go? Every time I look back, you were gone. Then all of a sudden you'd reappear, then you left again. But all of a sudden I turned around, I went back up and I asked the dad, I said, do you mind if I, I, I pray a blessing over your son? He goes, yeah, absolutely, go ahead. So he introduced me, his name was Asher. And so I got down on my knee and I said, Asher, I just want to pray a blessing over you. I, I don't know what, what the Holy Spirit said. I, I don't have a prophetic. I just, I believe I'm supposed to speak a blessing over you. And he just said, here. I just give him ice cream money beforehand so he's happy. Right? So he's, so I begin to pray. And I mean, the Holy Spirit fell in that moment. And I just break. And all of a sudden, he just begins to tremble in the presence of God. Just for a moment there. It wasn't long. It wasn't drawn out. I don't even know what the Holy Spirit did. All I know was I heard his voice, and I was responsive in obedience. I responded in obedience. I get up. I look at the dad said, apparently he needed that. And I, I said, yes, sir, and I just walked off. It wasn't my responsibility to connect with him. Hey, I'll give you a call later. Give me a testimony. No. My responsibility to simply be faithful in obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit. What do you think happens whenever we as the church, not only in our life of living holy and righteous before God, by heeding His Word and applying our life, but then what happens when all of a sudden when the Holy Spirit speaks, we listen and we respond? How many lives do you think would be changed? 
how many people do you think would come to faith? I, I wonder how many people in our circles of influence have yet to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ because we haven't shared it. Church, I want to to encourage you. I want to challenge you today. Hear the voice of the Lord. Hear the voice of the Lord and act on it. Act on it. That's the second truth this morning. Do it. Don't just listen, but do the Word. Apply the Word in your life. Those people who you work with, Man, there should be a a drive inside of you to say, I'm not going to allow a single person who I work with not know who I serve and not have the opportunity to come to faith. Doesn't mean that you've got to be forceful. It doesn't mean that you've got to try to try to push your your the gospel on them. No. You live the gospel, and when the door Lord opens the opportunity, he says, All right, speak. We open our mouth and begin to speak. Listen, you know that in every time in my life, I always ask the Lord, when I know He's wanting me to do something or say something, I always ask and say, Lord, all right, you give me the opportunity and I'll do it. You give the opportunity. The key thing is this, don't miss the opportunity. So there's a principle my dad taught me whenever I was young. He says, son, do you want to live a life of generosity and do you want to be a blessing? Yeah, dad, I, want, I see you, I want to do the same. He said, then you've got to be prepared to bless. you got to be prepared for when the opportunity arises to be able to be obedient in that moment. And so one practical thing that he taught me was this. I tuck some folding money in my pocket. I heard a, a pastor one time call it mad money. It's just mad money. I, I call it my she don't know I have. It's my she money. She don't know I have money. But I literally tuck this away simply for this reason. It's not for me to spend on me it's not even for me to spend on my family. It's for me to use as a tool to be able to bless somebody. Because I know this, people, whenever you give to them and they experience generosity, they're open for a moment to hear whatever you have to say. They'll let you pray for them, even if they're an atheist. Wouldn't you? Somebody blesses you in that moment, you're like, Somebody buys you a bread, you're looking at some shoes, and they say, hey, let me buy those for you. And you, Who are you? I, I just want to bless you. What do you think in that moment? They're going to let you say and do whatever you want to do in that moment. But listen, don't forsake those moments. If God opens, and it may not even be monetarily. It may be just to greet somebody and just to be friendly to somebody. It may be something just to, to say, hey, can, 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 can I just encourage you today? Who doesn't want to be encouraged? But all of a sudden you're beginning to bring value to their life and then show them truly where the value comes from, Jesus. And in that moment, you being prepared. It's the same thing, being prayed up, being ready to know the gospel, being able to share it and listen. You, may, you don't have to know how to quote John 3.16. You don't have to know how to go through and give three points in a point. No! You've got a testimony, friend. You've got a personal testimony of how Jesus has changed your life. And in that moment when the Holy Spirit speaks, you listen, and then you respond and say, hey, can I tell you what Jesus has done for me? I don't know about you, but I like a good story. I love a story where people's lives have been changed. And I want to encourage you, Church, let's don't just listen to his word, but let's respond and do what he says. We're called to be living testimonies, to be a living example. If the worship team will come, I want you to look at this James 21 22. Look what he says. Therefore, get rid of all the moral filth, the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. It saves you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. In Luke, there's a story where Jesus casts out a demon. And all of a sudden, the people begin to make a comment. And they say, well, this happened because he's the prince of demons. The devil empowered him to do this. 
Those people were very religious. And here's the thing is they were trying to put a reason. They were trying to bring some rationale to the power of God. And Jesus begins to take this moment and he begins to speak. And begins to give some instruction. And in this instruction, one of the ladies in the crowd speaks out. Listen to what she says. It happened, he spoke these things that a certain woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast which nursed you. But he said, Jesus responds, More than that, more than blessing my mama, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Wow. Wow. There's people who worship the Virgin Mary. But I think they missed this verse right here in the Bible. Even Jesus himself, listen. Yeah, that's a good thing. My mom and brother, but listen, bless even more so are those who hear the truth. Those who hear, and he was saying, Jesus, and who keep the words that he's speaking today. Friend, you want to make an impact? You want to live a life that is on a whole nother level? You want to experience the things in God that are, are things that we only have been heard of maybe in your life? It happens the same way that we experience salvation. By faith and obedience. When we hear the Holy Spirit call us, whether if it's in a moment like today where there was an altar call, or maybe you were driving down a road and just you knew something. The Holy Spirit just, man, gripped your heart. And you know that moment was the time to surrender your life to Jesus. Or maybe you were on a trip. Or maybe you were in a, a revival meeting. Or maybe you were watching TV and, and saw Billy Graham. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit spoke to you. And you responded and said yes. And since you've continued not only to hear, but to do. Listen today, don't be part of the crowd of the if onlys. Don't be ones that when God speaks to your life, not just a place of salvation, dare don't let today go by without responding and saying yes to Jesus. But if you're here today as a believer, don't be one who would put your faith in Him and miss the moments and live a life of, if only I would have listened. If only, man, God, you could have done something amazing. Don't live a life of regret. We can live a life full of blessing. Father, I thank you for every person in this room today. All across this room, you're speaking to every person, to every life. And even right now, Holy Spirit, I thank you. As we bow our heads and we just take a moment to reflect. Maybe right there, you just want to say, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me through this message? Right now, what are you saying to me? See, here's the truth, friend. He's always speaking. He's always speaking. He fellowships with us. But see, in that conversation demands that we would listen and then act upon the truth, that which He speaks. He's already spoken His Word. And today, you can receive that Word, hear it, act upon it, and walk in the life-giving power of Jesus Christ. So, Father, all across this room, every head bowed eye closed first thing maybe today the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and he's saying surrender and follow Jesus if that's you I'm just asking you to be bold just raise your hands and say Pastor you're talking to me today I'm choosing to follow Jesus I know that I'm lost I know that I'm a sinner oh but today I'm ready to follow Jesus today I'm choosing to follow after anybody that you raise your hand high for me. I want to pray for you. See, it's a point of you making a decision that today, my prayers are not going to save you. 
Jesus has already done the work on the cross. It's a place where you put your faith in Him. And you begin to walk by faith, following Him. Believing that He died, but He rose victorious on the third day. The same, you can die to your old man. And today, by choosing Jesus, you can walk in newness of life. That's you, I want to pray for you. In fact, all across this room, as every head bowed, can we just pray this together? Say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know that I've missed the mark. Oh, but you're so gracious. You're so loving. You're so kind. When I deserve death, you provided life. And so, Jesus, today, I hear you and I choose to follow you. By faith, I believe upon you, Jesus, and I confess you as my Lord, my Savior, my King. Fill me with your Spirit that I might live an overcoming life as I serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name.